Let me show you a quick demo. So I'm logging into the portal here. Uh, what you're not seeing is that we have a collection appliance on premise. I'm going to reset our demo data. So on premise, there's an appliance collecting information and sending it to the portal. When you first log in, it will just be assets. So again, asset information for us is operating systems, um, CPU cores, etc., um, memory, all this type of information that you see down here. All of this is exportable, so you can take it out and work with it offline if you need to. Um, we're looking at Windows servers, network infrastructure, so if you want to know how many routers or switches or firewalls they have, uh, VMware infrastructure, how many VMware hosts, what versions, uh, virtual machines, Linux or Unix devices. Again, this piece is completely uh, free for you to do as much discovery as you want. So there's no limitation here on scope. Once you collect that data, you'll go in and license it. Uh, license the servers that you want to collect performance and or connectivity data on. All right, they'll look like this. What that does is it begins to collect uh, connectivity information. And uh, that connectivity information, if I were to just look at it in a raw format, would look something like this. Um, it's really unmanageable, candidly, um, not for a human to deal with. All right, so this is uh, one server and all of the other servers that it's talking to. So as you can see, it's a, it's chaos. If you take this from a one server to a hundred servers, to a thousand servers, to 10,000 servers, it quickly becomes completely unworkable for a human. Um, so that's why you'll use our platform, uh, our machine learning and our algorithms to help take information like this and add intelligence to it. So. Here, instead of dealing with all of this connectivity, what you can do is you could come over and say, hey, uh, can you just build my application stacks for me? So we'll build app stacks. This process takes a minute or two to run. And what it's doing is it's processing all of that connectivity data, all of the behavioral data within the system. What applications individual servers are running, how they communicate to other servers and the heuristics of that. Once it's processed all of that, it will place them into application stacks. And in just a moment, I'll show you what those uh, stacks look like. This process is 100% automated. So there's nothing for you to input, as you can see. Um, we just wait for the application to complete its analysis of the customer's infrastructure. Um, this scales anywhere from five servers to, to 50,000 servers. Um, we, our largest engagement today is 27,000 servers um, as part of a divestiture for a company. So we can scale up as big as you need to go. So we're done now building app stacks and where before we had no stacks and just servers. Now what we have are 43 application stacks. Right? And those 43 application stacks are made up of individual servers they communicate with one another, as you can see here. Um, the detail of this communication, you can click on a link and see exactly what is communicating, why these two servers are talking, what applications are holding open that. This is the alert services uh, application talking here. All right, you can get into seeing which ports need to be open. In addition, if you had done flow capture with our platform, you would see things like bandwidth, average and max, bandwidth, uh, network latency. So if you're doing a project around a WAN consolidation or software-defined WAN, or if you're trying to determine if I can separate two application stacks, you can see what the bandwidth requirements are between them. So at an application level, you can see um, this type of detail. If you come out a level, you can see how all the applications interact with one another. So this is what's called our stack-to-stack -stack visualization. Here I can see how all my different application stacks interact with one another. If I want to know um, which applications, for example, are consumed by Citrix users, I could click on the Citrix application and see that it uses Active Directory, Exchange, and AutoApp 5, along with AutoApp 7. 
So again, I can use this information to understand the footprint of any application within my customer's environment and what, what the dependencies are for that application. Once I understand the application stacks, I can begin to do some use case specific analytics on them. So the first thing is to look for issues. Um, so we're going to look and check for things like in to support hardware, in to support software, uh, performance problems, hypervisor oversubscription. So all those things that might impact an application's performance or reliability or scalability, we're checking for every day and tracking for that customer. So they can click to see where they might have a problem and see that down below. In addition, we're going to do some classification for them. So what are their top applications? This is great for DR. So if I'm trying to decide which apps I need to do disaster recovery on, I need to know which ones are used most by external users versus internal users. I need to know how easy or hard it is to migrate a particular application into cloud. So whether I have to re-platform that application or I can just re-host it. I may want to understand how many different tiers are within the application. So where do I have database and web and cluster servers and middleware and so forth. So I can do a lot of analytics around those applications. I can also search and use advanced rule sets to tag additional information that you may want, such as where does where is their HIPAA data or PCI data so we can flag those applications from an um, analysis standpoint. I can then provide costing. I can look and see what it will cost to run at AWS or Azure or Google or Oracle. I can show them what the optimized pricing is. So basically inventory versus usage. So you're probably over provisioned. I can help you right size and save you money. And on most cases, we're saying about 66%. But if they're doing a private cloud or, or they're doing a resource pool based cloud, I can help them with that too. So here I can show them just what their IO requirements are. So forget about cost of instance based clouds. I just need to know how much CPU, how much memory, how much disk space I need for an app. And as you get your engineering team engaged, you can get all the way into looking at individual IOP metrics at each hour of the day. So I want to see the aggregate um, disk. Um, here we go, the aggregated disk IO rate, right, for all of the servers within an application stack by hour of the day. And I can use this information to plan from a performance standpoint. Uh, for my applications. Ultimately, then you may want to migrate an app or you may want to take some action on an application. So I'll show you that. Uh, I can quickly come in here and uh, take, there's an action button, right? So I can update a CMDB. Um, I can my export to a migration tool like River Meadow, Cloud Velox. I can update the CMDB, et cetera. So I can take actions on this. And then ultimately, we want to be able to track it ongoing. So we can do our performance and trending. We can see how that application is changing over time. Um, we can see which applications are improving and which are not. This allows you to get to the detail of individual applications, um, going in, seeing which servers, for example, are having difficulty you know, here you can think more kind of traditional network monitoring, uh, where you may want to just uh, see what the CPU memory disk utilization is for a particular server um, as you work with a client, right? You're going to track this on an ongoing basis, trend it for them, uh, show them what's happening in their environment. So this is what the Cloudscape platform allows you to do. So thanks for taking time today to listen to our video. Um, you can reach us at sales at risknetworks.com, and we look forward to working with you. Thanks again.